Welcome back to the final segment of today's program here on Taiwan Outlook. I'm your host, Wu Rei Guo. Peter, we're going to continue this you know, conversation with you by asking you how would you rate the average English ability of a citizen or a student here in Taiwan? Uh, I have to uh, confess that you know it <laughs> seems that our proficiency as a whole is yes. going down. It's going down a little bit because yeah. you know for some time mm -hmm. uh, we fail to pay attention to grammar. Mm -hmm. I do not mean that grammar is everything, but without a good understanding of grammar, you cannot mm -hmm. write very beautifully. No, nor can you speak English beautifully. So mm -hmm. that's why this is something we fail to understand. Those. People concerned should understand this. I hope that you know, this kind of strategy can be uh, used in the future. Going back, you know, to the uh, you know the same method we used before. Yes, definitely. Uh, in a, another way, uh, we still want to say that probably this is also very good because even though our grammar is not very good, a lot of people can speak English mm -hmm. to some extent. Yes. Because English is meant to be communicable, yes. to be understood by people. Mm -hmm. So grammar in this case, in terms of spoken English, is not that important. No. But when it comes to examinations, so definitely we're going downhill. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, our test, unless, especially the TOEFL test, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, the uh, general performance mm -hmm. is not good as mm -hmm. compared with uh, 26 countries or areas in Asia, mm -hmm. you know, we probably, you know, would be uh, fourth, you know, the back, you know, from backward. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, Peter, you know, I very much echo your point earlier about, you know, uh, the, the problems that we have here in Taiwan, especially among the younger generations in terms of their English proficiency, because I teach uh, on a part-time basis at the local university. And I also see that, you know, my students, you know, on average, their English ability is really on the decline, and uh, they, on average, also lack the motivation, the desire to learn. For example, I often ask my students, uh, how many of you would think of an overseas graduate training after you get out of college in Taiwan? Very, very few will respond in the affirmative that they plan to go overseas, whether it's you know, the Europe or United States or Australia and places to get an advanced education. Or maybe language is a consideration, maybe family finances is another consideration, but whatever the reason, you know, we don't seem to have younger generations who you know, really have that desire, you know, that thirst to learn the brand new English other than their mother tongue. How do you, you know, you know, rationalize that? Well, actually, the media is to blame for this. Yeah, we don't have any uh, enough lot of, Taiwan outlook on right, the program. Right, right, right. Yes. Because a lot of television, <laughs> local television stations is here. Broadcast news that has to do with domestic affairs. Exactly. Especially those, what, what we call, we term yellow journalism. Mm. You know, usually news that has to do with, with violence. Mm. So we lack what we call the international view. Mm -hmm. So that's why students... Very few students, or fewer and fewer students, will think about you know traveling mm -hmm. or you know studying abroad as we did before. Okay, okay? so that's why they more or less have become you know narrow-minded. So mm -hmm. I, we do hope that the media you know can you know uh, broadcast more news about you know what's happening in the whole around world. the globe, yes. and also in the positive way instead mm -hmm. of. Uh, rather than a negative way, mm -hmm. so that students can have, you know, what we call the right attitude to our life. This exactly. is something I hope that we can emphasize. Yeah, then also on the other hand, this is, you know, based on my own personal observation, that we have a lot of outstanding, for example, athletes in, this, you know, in the game of baseball, for example. And we have a number of, you know, uh, pitchers that are currently, you know, playing in the major league in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, somehow, I mean, in terms of in addition of conquering their difficulties in English language, I've also felt that it's also important for these outstanding athletes to be assimilated locally, you know, by staying in the U.S. market or wherever they are located on the U.S. continent uh, to try to be a part of a community. You know, to you know, learn the language better, and not only the language, but also becoming a household name. You know, right. whether doing product endorsement or doing baseball camps. You know, instead of always coming back to you know Taiwan during the winter recesses and, and spending the time with right, family right. and friends, which is wonderful. 
but that, you know, I mean, in terms of their long-term career perspective, I, I think it's very, very important for our athletes, for our younger generation of students or, or people to be able to assimilate, not only because of, you know, language dimension only, but also in terms of lifestyle, in terms of culture. And uh, would you have any recommendation as a seasoned, you know, uh, uh, English teacher in Taiwan, that would you have any recommendation for our government, for our private enterprises, and for average citizen in Taiwan who would like to be part of this Go English movement here on the island? Uh, ours, you know, uh, has already become what we call the global village. So mm. learning English Precisely. is very important. Mm -hmm. I uh, feel very happy uh, to let everyone here know that, you know, uh, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. the government is going to, uh, you know, set up another educational system. That is, you know, Good. probably next year, mm -hmm. you know, all uh, government employees are required to take a special kind of English test. Mm -hmm. If this can be carried out, then everyone here in Taiwan is supposed to learn English in a, you know, even more eager way. Mm -hmm. And also, I quite agree with you for those, uh, as you talked about those athletes, mm -hmm. they should stay where they are in the United States, for example, those baseball stars, mm -hmm. they can uh, mingle into that society. Precisely. Because by so doing, they can become role models, mm -hmm. and occasionally, if they can show up on television, mm -hmm. if they happen to be able to speak very beautiful English, that's right. that could also serve as a stimulus mm -hmm. for students here in Taiwan to keep mm -hmm. on learning English. Mm -hmm. And also, I want to mention another good point mm -hmm. for those of us that do not have, you know, very s strong financial support, mm -hmm. probably serving the net can let you find something, a yeah. very good source. That is, you know, they have what they call the job hunting mm -hmm. uh, market without you know, having to you know, spend, you know, money on your own. You can either get a job overseas for a short time, let's mm -hmm. say about half a year or something. Mm -hmm. You can make money at the same time. You can pick up that language, not necessarily English, uh -huh. maybe Portuguese or Spanish or something. Yes. Peter, you've been teaching English on television, on radio, and now on the Internet. Which medium do you prefer? Uh, I prefer, you know, to teach on the Internet. Because? Uh, because, you know, on the Internet, you can find a lot of information that may turn out to be quite useful, not only for me, mm -hmm. but, of course, for students as well. Yeah. So I like it very much. Mm -hmm. And also, by the way, I want to tell the secret. Please. When I feel tired, yes. when I don't feel like doing anything, yeah. I surf the net, yes. you know, tuning to uh, AOL because... Okay. There is a lot of old information, music oh, okay. going on all the time. Yes, yes, I understand music is a very important part of your, you know, radio and television program. Definitely, because you know, by listening to music, I can you know stay out of trouble. Oh, well, right. who who are some of your favorite, you know, uh, musical artists? Oh, a lot of them. You know, Patty Page and okay. the, the Platters. You okay. know, the Carpenters, of course, to name yeah. just a few. Yeah, but yes. uh, you know, these are people that maybe my parents' generation <laughs> enjoyed <laughs> a little more but you know people you know for myself you know like we grew up with the uh, uh, Michael Jackson's and uh, is that right <laughs> yeah well uh, Peter we're coming to the final part of the program uh, for the re remainder that uh, you being an English teacher you being a you know role model for many of us who like to you know excel in the English language you also being an entrepreneur and you now have businesses presences you know, throughout the island and also on the mainland and also in Vietnam now and uh, what would be your word of advice for people who want to follow your path of career development? And what would be the areas that you think you would recommend that younger generations to really you know, strengthen their ability in terms of you know, facing a globalized, a very competitive world? I want to uh, specialize in you know, this very topic, improving your English. As Raymond just said before, you know, we can mm -hmm. start to learn anything from scratch. Mm -hmm. So from now on, my advice is that imagine yourself as a new, newborn baby. Mm -hmm. Start with, you know, the, those, the ABCs regarding uh, learning English. That is, follow my steps. First of all, learn to improve your pronunciation. Mm -hmm. It will take no more than three months. Later on, talk to yourself based on a book written by native speakers mm -hmm. and gradually once you are you find your you yourself you know are able to speak english this time you have to learn to read you know uh widely by uh, reading newspapers or magazines paragraph by paragraph because less is more 
-hmm. that if you can make it, definitely I'll be very proud of you. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if you have the confidence, definitely you can follow in my footsteps. You can also be, you know, reach, you know, where I am now. Okay, Peter, finally, you have played different roles in your career development. You're being an English student, you're being a teacher, you're an entrepreneur, and now you're you know, a very successful executive of the English you know, language program around you know, the island and also on China, in China and also in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Which role do you like the best? Well, I uh, actually... Or do you have a preface? Uh, you like yeah, all of it. <laughs> yes. No, 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 no. I, uh, you know, see, uh, I'm already a grand grandfather. But you marry early. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's why I like this role okay. best because I do hope that, you know, my uh, little kids, you know, can, um, you know, outshine me mm. in the future. Or I'm sure they will. Me. Yeah, Thank but you. that's going to be a tall order. Mm, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, but uh, we'll certainly look, you know, for nothing for the best, you know, coming, you know, from you in the future and also in terms of your continued development uh, as an English teacher as a promoter of the English language, and also as a successful business executive in terms of setting up all these leading language institutes uh, in China, in Taiwan, and in uh, Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for being on the program. My pleasure. Yes. Yeah, actually. Okay, thank you. And thank you for watching the Taiwan Outlook today. I'll see you next time on Macroview Television. Thank you.